Hey YouTube, welcome back to my shop. I was just about to mount a set of soft jaws on my three jaw to just knock out a couple of these little parts, nothing, no rocket science here. Uh, but I thought I'd break the camera out, maybe we do a short video, uh, shoot the poop as it were, uh, on soft jaws, why they're so darn handy and why you'd want so many of them. Uh, for the kind of stuff I do, to be completely honest, they don't come out all that often and you can probably see uh, that these are pretty much how I received them with the lathe. But when you do need them, they, they're a lifesaver. Now before we get too far, uh, you know, what the heck are soft jaws? What can you do with soft jaws? So soft jaws are pretty much what the name implies. They're jaws that haven't been hardened. And uh, the reason that's good is you can cut them. So you can cut any form you want into these jaws to accommodate the part that you're holding. Contrary to popular belief and what you might actually see on my lathe, Hard jaws are not supposed to be cut, so I ask you to ignore any battle scars you might see here. So in addition to the internal and the external set of jaws that I got with this chuck, I also received um, three sets of soft jaws. So the soft jaws start life out, you know, maybe looking something like this. These have been formed, you know, they, these things still have a lot of life left in them. You can see the previous owner cut, and a little round, I guess they were holding a a little part, maybe about an inch and a half in diameter. And you can see this, these other set here. I'm not sure what part they were holding here, but it looks like it had a little uh, tapered section, a small round. They've got an undercut there, maybe just to handle some burrs. And then the, the major diameter, this looks a little bit bigger, maybe like a, it was a three inch part or so. But the whole point of these is to be able to work with just odd, I'm shooting from the hip here, I just grabbed these out of my it's like my plumbing box. But if you were trying to hold something like this, I don't know why, but if you were, in your standard three jaw, you know, your straight hardened jaws, you'd run into a little problem trying to get a good grip on these, you know, depending on what kind of operation you're trying to do. Let's take a look at this part. Um, I don't know what this came from, but it's it's really thin wall. It's got this little flange on the back similar to this part. And if you grabbed onto this with straight jaws, there's, you know, you don't you don't get a lot of registration. So what you do, or what I do, is mount the soft jaws and then cut this profile into the jaw. So now you're, you potentially are registering on one of these shoulders and you're grabbing two diameters and you've, and you've got just a lot of better hold on the part and registration. What I'll be doing is just doing a simple counter bore and I'll, and I'll show that to you so just so I can register these sort of mimicking uh, a stop that you might have in the spindle to get a good depth, a uh, good consistent repeatable depth. I only need these within a couple of thou, so you know it's not that critical. So these are my soft jaws. I can't take credit for these, I think I've seen this idea around before. Um, I'm sure they look familiar. I just used some hex stock that I had on hand, and I still have it. I don't go through a lot of material here. This is, I think, 70 millimeter, like two and three quarter inch hex. And these were, so I, you know, I received three sets of soft jaws with the lathe, and I've used this set so much that there was just no more soft jaw left, and you'd throw it away, and I'd start using these. But what I did was uh, machine the top, so I cut a slot in them, and and mounted this hex on the top with some. Uh, slots to key into them. Just a countersunk socket head cap screw. Let me put these on the chuck and we'll take these apart. These are on there pretty tight. There's probably a drop of Loctite on there. Um, and I'll show you how these are meant to work. Alright, so that's how they go on the chuck. You can see, uh, I don't remember exactly what this, uh, looking at it now it looks like I was maybe trying to get a, a small wash or a small part to final thickness. And uh, it was probably thin to start off with. 
And so to you know give it some good support, a positive backstop, and keep it square, I just cut that little counter bore in there and pop the part in. Before I take this off, the advantage to a set of jaws like this as compared to your traditional soft jaws, um, and these are a, a single piece design. It looks like actually someone welded that on there. I don't know if you guys could see that. So these jaws probably wore out and previous owner welded on a you know a piece of soft some mild steel just to extend these life. They do make these in a, a split design where you have the uh, you know the actual jaw base and then you know replaceable or flippable uh, top jaws. But in, in contrast to something like this, this is a, you know, you have one business end on these. And so you make your part, and then these are dedicated for that part, or you recut them for the next part, and you go through them relatively fast. Uh, these, on the contrary, and I'll take this off and show you, you can take these out and index them into, you know, one of six positions. So one set of soft jaws, although a little bit, you know, bigger and bulkier, get me potentially six sets, you know, I can handle six sets of parts if I need to index those around, you know, be careful about how they're marked, etc. And just a lot more versatility. Now granted, if you had a big part here and you indexed it, you can't really put another big part here or you cut into that previous one. Looks like what I did was cut some slots some snug fitting slots and a key on the top of that jaw. Let's see if I can turn this around a bit. In addition to the key, a little counter bore, and I think I probably press fitted or loctited a little locating bushing in. And there's two spots on the jaw that have uh, the equivalent, sort of the countersink and the threaded hole. So I can mount these in one of two positions. There it is. And then I can tighten it down for for larger work. And again, you take these out, index it to the next one, put it back on, screw it down, and you'd have a sort of a fresh soft jaw. Just get that back on. And then once those were back on, it looks like I just did a facing cut to get these all in the same plane. You can still see a little low splat here. All right, just do a quick counter bore and mount this part and see how it works. So maybe just to state the obvious, when you're cutting these forms in your soft jaws, in this case it's just a you know a straight counter bore with a stop, so I have a little material sticking out to actually keep working on this part to face it you don't want to make it the exact same size as your part. So if this is a, this is 20 millimeter OD, if I cut that 20 millimeter, I'm not going to be able to tighten these soft jaws onto the part. So I'm going to have to make that a little bit undersized, you know, so that I can open the jaws, put the part in and tighten down on it and be able to repeat that position reasonably um, and get some good gripping power on the part. In this case, I'm not too concerned about concentricity. I just want that depth to be uh, consistent you know, across all 16 of these parts. All right, there's the finished counter bore. I just went in there with a boring bar, small boring bar. Sorry, I couldn't quite get the camera in and around this close to film that while it was happening. But nothing very exciting. Depth wasn't critical, and I kept it about 20 thou below the... Uh, the diameter of the part that I'm hoping to hold. So now it just works like this. I take my part, you know, I've faced off one side maybe or cut off, open that up a hair. I should be able to get that down, tighten it up. And then I'll have my the carriage in, you know, and locked. So I'm coming over and I'm doing the same facing cut in the same position and I can just swap parts in and out. So for that 
I don't know, 10 minute investment in setting up the soft jaws and cutting that location, I can now breeze through 16 parts like nobody's business. All right, uh, again, not rocket science, but maybe somebody found that interesting. Till next time.